I started out as a developer, integrator, slash hacker. Uh, turned out that I thought that this was more interesting to, to spend my time on doing sysadmin stuff. Uh, so my career went that way and spent some time on security consultancy as well. Mainly in the areas of um, also oriented towards uh, Linux in, uh, setup and administration. Uh, then I joined Unity uh, as uh, the, the first official uh, admin. Uh, I'm not sure how this uh, sounds thing. Um, so, yeah, I joined Unity in uh, 2011 as a sysadmin. Uh, the only one. Uh, we were 80 people at that time. Uh, later, we we are now 700 and uh, some people. Uh, we have a small IT team uh, supporting those people. What we are doing is we are ha we are developing a a development uh, platform for creating uh, games and interactive 2D and 3D content. Uh, the first release was done in 2005. Uh, Right now, we are, we are moving into the SaaS business. Uh, we are developing services to, to, to be integrated into the development platform. So if you have created a game, you can use our cloud built technology to, to build that game for iOS, Android, and, and web player at the moment. Um, we've been using Open Nebula since 3.2. And I'm supposed to talk about KISS, uh, so keep it simple, stupid. And last year there was this nice quote uh, about, from Albert Einstein, so I found a new one <laughs> for you to read this year. Um, so KISS is, uh, I think, is a, a good principle that I first encountered when I was about 14. Uh, I was heavily into archery at that time, so I, I went and worked at an archery shop and he was uh, talking about the archery equipment and saying, well, you need to keep it simple, stupid. And I didn't really get his point at that time, but uh, it turned out that he was referring to if you put all kinds of different equipment onto your bow, you, you will most likely fail doing some kind of competition. Um, and I, I found that that uh, expression was kind of stuck and I, I actually found it quite interesting to do that uh, also with uh, in, in terms of infrastructure. Um, it seems like if you keep that in mind when you're doing things, it's less likely to break uh, throughout the, the lifetime of the product. So we spend a lot of time actually to, to, to design our setup so that it, it upholds the, the KISS uh, principles. Uh, when I first joined Unity, as I mentioned, I was the only one. Um, I inherited a system that was built by developers for developers, and then, uh, as you can imagine, that system was kind of a, a spider web. So when I started uh, digging around in the systems and trying to, to sort them out, I broke more things than I actually uh, fixed. Um, so again, back to the, the KISS. Uh, in this uh, scenario, it seems like uh, at least uh, nobody at that time had thought about uh, doing that. Um, so. I started out uh, uh, working on some kind of principles that we should uh, try to uphold in, in when we build new stuff. Um, we use open source when it's feasible, um, meaning that most of our infrastructure is built on open source. Um, and we use, you use it, uh, we, we kind of have this idea if, if we have choices, we will pick open source. Uh, we have had uh, a lot of uh, proprietary systems where we went into deadlocks with the developers of that systems because uh, performance issues and they we have been beta testing software for years and years and never actually got around to to have any kind of fix so we needed to change them anyway uh, so our experience is that uh, at least we have the ability to to fix stuff that is broken in open source uh, and also to engage in a, in a much uh, fine, more fine-grained level. Um, so that's why we use uh, open source uh, whenever we can. Um, again, back to KISS. Uh, 
it's really important that when you design a system that that scales and that uh, that you know that if you take down one system, you can you don't have to break the entire setup in order for doing maintenance on just a single part of it. Uh, we try to to have no single points of failure. Again, back to maintenance. Uh, also, we haven't had any real 24/7 operations. It has been back, uh, it has been on. Uh, basis of, okay, we can fix it if, if our monitor shows that there's something wrong, but we didn't have any uh, on-call duty set up for, for the last five years. So we needed to have a system where at least half of our infrastructure could break uh, or be unavailable uh, during that time. And then if you have that kind of philosophy, you need to, uh, to be able to, um, to run stuff in the simplest possible way and and make sure that uh, you have your your nodes split up in a way where you have data stored in a cluster-based setup and you have a lot of compute that can randomly shut down and you don't really have any worries about it. Um, I think that even though you, you live in cloud, everything breaks, uh, it shows, uh, it, and it repeats itself. So depending on what kind of solution you pick, uh, you can either choose to uh, to spend a lot of development time uh, uh, fixing uh, the way that the design has been done in different setups, or you can actually uh, spend your time in improving the infrastructure. Um, the last principle that we are trying to, to do is that if we find an error in our system, we will fix it, uh, basically. Even though we just set up a new, let's say, we, when I joined, we, we invested heavily in uh, a back-end storage infrastructure, and it it, uh, we found out that that was uh, the wrong choice, so we replaced that later on. So, back to tool selections. Uh, so, we were, when I first joined Unity, we were looking at tools. Um, again, back to, we wanted to have it open source, and I've been working with Zen for a long time. Uh, it seems like it was uh, maturing quite a bit, but then at that time, I wanted to try something new, so I was looking at KVM at that point and we wanted to have some kind of simple uh, VM management tool. Um, so we were looking at these tools in the, in the, in the KISS uh, principles. Uh, so basically we turned out to be choosing Open Nebula. Um, why we chose Open Nebula was it was uh, the easiest to install and make uh, our first VM with. Uh, at that time, we tried. Uh, we we looked shortly at OpenStack, but that was uh, before it was actually going anywhere fast, and it was really complicated. Uh, so we didn't really try to install that. We looked at uh, OpenQIM as well, and that was uh, also very uh, troublesome to actually get running. Um, so our first step was just to get a system running that w and deploy one VM. Um, that seemed to be uh, the easiest for us to, is, was to use Open Nebula. And also, one of the things is that we were a small team. Of, uh, at that time, we were two people. Um, so one was uh, looking after the new users and new hires in the, uh, the, in the organization, and the other one was looking into how could we actually do this uh, virtualization uh, in a smarter way that we did. Uh, so we knew the, the technologies about KVM, Libvirt, and stuff like that, and then Open Nebula was kind enough to put an interface on top of that, and uh, we used that for, for our infrastructure at that point. Uh, it was only used for a tool for, for our, the sysadmins. Uh, we haven't had uh, the end users going into our portals. Uh, we have so... Uh, I think in, 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 in when, when we started out in 3, um, our first installation was uh, with 3.2. We, we used it as a virtual manager. Uh, and then we had set up it, it set up with a shared storage based on NFS. Uh, we rendered our servers with Rackspace uh, and got a nice EMC slice attached to our servers. We used DFS2 file system. Uh, for clustering, um, and we used Red Hat uh, not because we wanted to, because but uh, because uh, in order to get EMC working, we had to. Um, 
Our first major fuck up in that system was to use DFS2. Uh, it worked very well when it was running. If it broke, it took, uh, we had a major meltdown in, in that center. And we had to do file check on our four terabyte data store. Uh, and DFS2 is not really meant for doing that kind of thing. Uh, it, uh, it took four days, it, or it would have taken four days to come back up line, so we kindly skipped that part and just went straight to ignoring the file check and hoping for that the file system was not too broken. Okay. I'll try this one instead. Um, so the next uh, step, as back to the, we need to fix the, the, all our infrastructure. It was, was not uh, really good for us, so we turned into looking at Rackspace. It has a nice feature of uh, very limited uh, bandwidth uh, attached to the, your account, uh, which we couldn't really, really use. Uh, and then we looked at our storage uh, because, well, EMC was uh, very ex too expensive and it was uh, not really flexible for us. So. Uh, so the placement was turned into software. They have this uh, nice monthly payments instead of a, a yearly commitment. So that was way more flexible and also they have uh, way higher bandwidth uh, attachments to their um, um, uh, bare metal servers. Um, Ceph we deployed uh, mainly because we found out that uh, the, the sand that we were using in our facility in Copenhagen uh, was uh, co rate at the time. We found a bug in their uh, firmware and they were more uh, into selling us new stuff than fixing their bug in their, software, in their firmware. So we skipped them and, and installed Ceph and that has turned out to be very well for us. Uh, worked out uh, quite stable and so we decided to deploy that into software and use that as backend for for Open Nebula. Uh, at that point, Open Nebula was not really Ceph friendly. You had to hack it in order to make it work. Um, and then we switched to Ubuntu uh, instead of a Red Hat based setup. Our third setup, where again we have a, a we found a, a, a better way than just having to use uh, bridged interfaces. We used the uh, open vSwitch instead. So we could have our VLANs uh, transported onto the VMs and have network segmentations. Uh, and then we got Open Nebula 4.8. Um, so we have done a lot of trial and errors, I think. <laughs> um, and our current setup, uh, we, we engaged with uh, Open Nebula systems in order to, to speed up uh, our deployment of that system. Uh, we wanted to try out a federated setup. We haven't done that before. Uh, before it has been single uh, DC uh, setups. Uh, so, so we wanted to introduce a three DC setup where each DC was located in a, a different region. So we have one in Asia, one in EMEA, one in the US, and each of them has a hybrid cloud attached to it. So we have scale out functionality with software into software's public cloud and also into Amazon. Um, and then, yeah, on top of that, we have uh, three standalone setups. Uh, we have one for deploying tests and, and looking at new features and seeing how it works uh, before we put them into production. Uh, then we have our old uh, uh, 4.8 setup. Uh, we actually have two of them still. Um, we are slowly migrating because we, we have been moving locations uh, once we have done new setups uh, also. So um, we spend some, quite some time to f uh, granularly replacing the bits and pieces that, that didn't work for us and I think that Open Nebula fit that model quite well. There's a lot of new features coming on. Uh, VXLAN came with 4.12 and that made it actually possible for us to do uh, VLAN segmentation in, a whole, in an environment where you actually don't have control of the, the network. Uh, so with software you get a private VLAN to your account but you don't have uh, the ability to actually get more VLANs onto that network uh, other than 
you can use VXLAN to, to, to do that kind of thing. Um, everything has been backbone routed with uh, OSPF, so uh, we have connected all the, the hybrid versions uh, of the cloud into uh, to also uh, work with uh, the, the bare metal setup, so we, we can do backbone routing through between Amazon and, and our Nebula installation. We, so that's uh, where we're at now. Uh, I think that OpenNebula supports the KISS infrastructure very well because you don't have to learn a lot of third-party components. Uh, you can use your knowledge about uh, regular uh, virtualization technologies. Basically, uh, uh, in my mind, the cloud is just uh, virtualization with an API. So uh, the nice thing about OpenNebula is it just uses Libvirt and you can actually uh, remove all of your uh, Open Nebula installation and just uh, still continue to, to do regular VM uh, operations onto your complete environment. So there will be, of course, some, some problems if uh, you have to re uh, to, to get all that information back into Open Nebula. Uh, but you can do it, at least you can have an infrastructure that doesn't break just because one component is, uh, is, is missing. So, yeah, as uh, has been mentioned, uh, we have done uh, found a feature with uh, with the Ceph snapshots, uh, and actually live snapshots. Uh, I was told is coming in for, for uh, fourteen point two, which uh, I think it's very awesome. It's one of the things that we are missing now, but now it seems to be fixed, so that's uh, really great. Uh, we have also worked with the cloud stack, uh, which we use for for orchestration, and they have improved their. The Open Nebula Cloud API uh, functionality a lot. Uh, we got them to more or less implement all of uh, all of the Open Nebula's APIs, so you can you can spin up new VMs and maintain all of your security groups and stuff like that with uh, uh, with SolStack. Uh, like we we think that using open source is is not just free. You should uh, give back what you can. Uh, I think that's uh, that's one of the the powers of uh, open source is that yeah, you can you can spin up a lot on your own, and you can just use what is uh, out there. But you also need to to keep in mind that uh, somebody else made all of that. So maybe you should uh, try and and put some of that back into the community of what you're doing. So we 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 try to do that as much as much as we can. Um, uh, looking a little ahead, uh, right now we have two major things that we need to to do. Uh, we need to, to look at the dynamic DNS, uh, how we can actually do that. Uh, Route uh, 53 is nice, it has a nice API and uh, works well. Uh, we need to have that same functionality built into our Open Nebula so that we can get complete, uh, uh, what you call that, um, so when we deploy a system, we don't really care about uh, where we deploy it. Uh, basically, we need to have a infrastructure that is hidden to our service teams, so basically they can uh, just uh, go ahead and deploy a service anywhere, and we should have a, a system that supports that uh, thing. Uh, so we have the dynamic DNS as one part of that, and then we have the virtual routers uh, as another part, uh, where when we create the, the, the virtual data centers, the, the routers should be part of that uh, center instead of being a bottleneck. Uh, in our current setup, it's a, it's a bottleneck because we have one centralized router, or well, we have two of them since we don't want to have a single point of failure. But it still it has uh, limitations on uh, on the network speed uh, and stuff like that. So um, I think that was about what I had. Maybe I was a little fast. <laughs> So, if, if you have any questions, uh, yes. Uh, about the set, setup. Yes. Um, is this set not totally distributed? Can you repeat the question? Um, if the Ceph cluster is globally distributed, uh, no, it's not. We have uh, as many <coughs> Ceph clusters as we have. Um, the data centers. Our philosophy behind the data center is that they have to be self-sufficient. So 
if we kill all the other five or four, in this case, we will still have one working. So that is uh, the philosophy. That's also why we have uh, built in all the functionality into each center. We have done a lot of uh, redundancy. Uh, so we use uh, VMs at, to run Docker inside the VMs. And then we have repositories, uh, regist Docker registries in every uh, DC in order to be able to maintain that one DC if it loses links to the others. Um, we are looking at making uh, radars uh, being globally distributed. Uh, we have done some test deployments that, but haven't really had any major success uh, in, in making it work well. I know that the, the newer versions of uh, Ceph, uh, they're working very hard to get the, all of this uh, working uh, in a more, what you call it, uh, usable manner. <laughs> and How do you keep your data in sync? Uh, well, we don't really sync uh, the data. We, we use, uh, where we have to keep them in sync, we do. Uh, but we try not to have to do that. Uh, so the storage-wise, we have uh, replications uh, and, and do the same stuff each place. So basically, it's repeating uh, of what we have done in one center. We repeat that into another center in order to to again not uh, to not have the uh, the need for a working link between them. So we treat them as uh, individual units, basically. So our deployment is, so when we deploy, we use salt to deploy, and if we, we have created a new image, we will upload that image into all of the, all of the data centers, so that we will have the, the data available in the, all the centers. Uh, uh, the, the, the places where we need persistent data, we, we will, try and segment that to only have the data that we need uh, in each data center and, and only focus on, uh, on distributing the, the smaller bits that needs to be distributed to all the data centers. Um, so we use sharding a lot in order to, to maintain that kind of setup. Um, if we look a little more ahead, we will be able, we will be looking into setting up more multiple DCs in each uh, region. So we will have two in Asia, we will have some kind of replication between them, but we need to have them uh, look pretty close to each other before we can actually do that kind of thing. But we need to build in data center failover f functionality uh, at some point. Any more questions? Are you, yeah, are you happy with the X Lang? Is it something you have? Uh, would you like to uh, elaborate a bit more on the X Lang? Um, yeah, I would say yes. <laughs> um, it has solved uh, the problem about uh, for us where we had no, uh, we, we didn't have any. Uh, network segmentations. Uh, we, it has introduced some other issues where we need to, when we build our routers, we need to add new VXLANs. Also, the, I think there was, uh, we discovered some kind of issue where we actually somehow managed to get a VXLAN put on top of another VXLAN, uh, which crashed the complete system, uh, basically. Uh, so. Those kind of things you need to be very careful. Not uh, that doesn't happen because it, it will it will just kill the the VM host basically. Uh, it, it, at least that what was happened to us. Uh, so that was not really funny. <laughs> Luckily we were not. We was uh, it was still in a test phase, so we didn't have anything in production at that time. So yes. Yeah. Yes, I have um, one question about your uh, plan for the future of your cloud. Mm -hmm. So in the future, what are you planning? You're trying to grow the, your private infrastructure, or you're planning, you know, to grow, you know, the public cloud use. Okay. 
Um, I think that uh, for now we will be working at getting our Open Nebula installation more mature so that we have the missing features uh, that we're using right now. It was what, uh, one, and one, one and a half year ago we bought a company that made, makes ads for games uh, and they were heavily using AWS and is still using AWS uh, to do all of their infrastructure. They have built a complete self-sufficient uh, live ops around all of the features that is in uh, Amazon and how to use auto scaling and uh, snapshotting functionality and EBS and stuff like that. Uh, so we are slowly building out these features into uh, to uh, Open Nebula in order to to actually move that out of, uh, of at least portions of that out of AWS. Um, we have to grow our infrastructure quite a bit to support that. Uh, they are scaling something a thousand, like a thousand CPUs uh, during peak times. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that on our own infrastructure, we have to have a lot of capacity available. Uh, I think that our current philosophy is that if we could get all the baseline running on our own infrastructure, uh, that would uh, work very well. And that will also uh, save us a lot of money and gain, uh, gain some more um, gain more visibility through the performance. Uh, one of the things that we need to build into Amazon at the moment is that we have to scale before we actually use it, utilizing the, the complete CPU because it will kill our latency in the application if, if we hit the, get into the too much uh, CPU steal time so we can get uh, a much cleaner performance uh, uh, environment and, and distribution in our own setup. So at least that's our experience. So, uh, so we will grow. I think that the, the most likely thing to happen is that we will grow, grow the hybrid uh, functionality more, and we will have more stuff put onto Open Nebula, but we'll still be able to scale out into public clouds. Also, the data center failover could easily be a failover of just uh, sitting in a public cloud somewhere. Uh, if we uh, need to, to, to actually, is, let's say that uh, the sender in uh, Asia is disappearing from a software, then we could easily put that into Amazon or another public cloud. But it has to be something else than uh, the same sender in, in, uh, with software. 